All right, welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part seven of the Tamiya 148 scale Fairy Swordfish Mark II. All right, in the last episode, I did step 15, which was the wings and the little parts, drilling holes, poking slots and stuff like that. And then 16, um, which was gluing on uh, bracing and the photo etch, which continued on step 17 with more photo etch. It supports the bracing wires, We've got all that. So the next part is step 18, which is smoke bombs, rockets, and the exhaust. So I'm going to cut those parts off and get cracking on that. So we need part E22 and E23. And it looks like uh, there are four of each of those. So we need 22 and 23. So there's 22. And 23. Oh, get that there and that there. Okay, so I've got it all uh, cleaned up and ready to go. So now all I need to do is just glue them together. And have these cool little interlocking joint thing going on. So we'll just glue these together. like thusly. I hope they stay straight. All right, so continue on gluing these together like thusly. Now some of these bomb racks and parts, um, I don't know how many yet, but some of them I can actually glue onto the wing before uh, before I paint them, before I um, assemble the bombs on it. For example, this plate right here and these rails are the same color as the underneath of the aircraft. So I don't have to do that separately. Um, I may do the rails separately, but I haven't decided yet. So we'll see. And then uh, the exhaust, you know, I'll, I'll do that separately um, so I can uh, um, paint it off the aircraft because it'll just be easier that way. And then glue it on afterwards after it's painted, after the aircraft and the exhaust is painted makes it a little bit easier so there is the bombs or the yeah the smoke bombs or the sets and for Tegan all right next is the uh, 
the rockets, three inch rockets, and I need to make, um, looks like there's four rockets per set. Uh, so I'm gonna cut all those off and get those ready. And those are parts um, E9, the tail fins, and E24, so. Actually, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Those are already attached. Wow, that's crazy. So, hmm. Here's what I'm going to do on this. I am going to cut the bomb side like this. on both E sprues and then I'll do something really groovy to make it easier to prime and paint and that is cut this here that way Put that there to paint them because where I'm cutting them off there is going to be facing down and you'll never see that little place where I cut it off sweet so let me uh, carry on with that endeavor So I didn't demonstrate it on the first one, but the uh, tail fin assembly, there are, um, there's a round hole, which I guess in real life is where the propellant would be, uh, you know, gassed out or whatever. And on this side is a square hole and it goes on the square peg on the back of the rocket. So it's pretty easy to line it up. There's a little bit of slop so you can adjust it to make sure it's square and even and everything so just like just like that all right so next I'm gonna cut out the two e6 parts and actually glue those onto the wings They're nice largish pieces like this and uh, this is one of those things I just kind of wonder why and I may find out, but for now, I just wonder why they have you assemble these plates with the rockets um, first. Because it's just, it seems like it would just be easier to paint the rockets and the, the rails separately. But I'm going to take a look at something here and see, because I may just assemble them, but we'll see. So let's get these cleaned up first. Get to the edges where the sprue gates were. go here
actually. I think perhaps I will assemble these because the way they are, they kind of stick out from the bottom there a little bit. So it would, I think, make sense to uh, Blade seems really small. That's weird. Um, I think it would make sense to actually paint them first. But let's see how these rails fit on here. Let's see if it would be easier to paint these in place. Oh, you know what? I have one that's missing the sprue thingy. Yeah, I'm thinking that these these would be too close together. To be able to paint in between and everything sufficiently so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with my my original plan and spray these separately all right next is the exhaust and um a20 15 and 14. Okay, so these parts fit together pretty well. Um, this part here has a couple of um, kind of angled slots that fit on these angled protrusions here. And according to the uh, instructions, these little, if I can get it back in place now, there we go. These little shark fin looking things, the slope needs to go towards the back. This one here, there's a little double angle shape. I don't know what to call it, but same thing that fits into this notch here. And again, the fin things go towards the back. So just put it in place like that. some across the top right there and smash it all together look at that holy smokes it's spectacular like that now I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there and there like that so now the exhaust is done so um, yeah I'm running out of uh, things to hold this for painting so I'm gonna use this right here like that okay so that takes care of step number 18 now it's for All right, so in step 19, I need um, to make two of these, which is E1 with E5 and E4. So let me cut off 
the E1 parts and then see if there's much of a difference between the E5 and E4. Um, looking at them, I don't see much difference. Well, let's see if we can, if I can do this in a way that'll be easy to identify. So let me cut off one of the E1s and then I'll cut off the other parts separately and glue them in place. So first, let's do a little quick sand thing here. Okay, so it looks like this piece of detail here looks like the high spot faces the back. So let me set that down like that. And E5 goes on this side, E4 goes on this side. So let me cut those off. So we've got E4. there and then E5 on that side so with them off I'm gonna look yeah I really don't see oh yeah there is a difference one of them has where the the bomb or whatever attaches they're longer on the e5 part okay so i'll have to pay attention to that but at least i know what the difference is and then um get those ready to paint so let's see these here just needs a little bit of cleanup right here on this because this part's angled so it doesn't cut as cleanly as the other side. Okay. So, in looking at it, it'd be kind of hard to mess them up because, like I said, there's a long slot and a short slot, and there are, or a protrusion, and there are matching slots there. So, all it takes is just a little bit of uh, paying attention. So that goes there like that. that hold it in place for a second make sure it's straight and perpendicular to the base plate so I'm gonna glue all those into place and I'm gonna do the one for the other side and then come back so next I cut off both of the e11s and um, they just need a little bit of cleanup, mainly the seam line, but also the instructions. I've already cut them off, but there's some little protrusions right here, kind of pointed shaped, just have to be trimmed off. So once you do that, you can move on to cleaning this stuff up. Alright, so the last part of step 19 is to cut off these Q 
canisters here, whatever they are, I don't know what they are, they're E21, and eventually they'll be painted with uh, E7, which is red, and E3, which is yellow. But um, for now, I need to cut them off and get them cleaned up so they'll be ready to paint, because I'll do one color at a time, so it'll be easy to kind of hold on to them with tweezers or something like that. But I'm trying to get all this stuff prepped and ready um, for paint. All right, so uh, that completes 19. So the next part is 20, and that is where um, you have a choice of the uh, extended wings or folded. So folded is what I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut off. Now, I'm not gonna attach the wheels to the struts. I'm just gonna assemble the struts on the aircraft since they will be uh, painted uh, the color, the underside color. And I'll go ahead and assemble the wheels and have them ready so I can paint them at the same time. But first, uh, well, you know, as a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and cut the wheels off. So we got two G16s and two G17s. So let's cut these off like thusly. Get the stuff trimmed off here. All right, so the next thing I need to do, um, I've got one of the uh, struts cut off and one of the wheels glued together. And um, it's basically a ridge going the circumference that fits in. And there's a little bit of slop. So what I did is I just put the glue in there and then turned it and adjusted accordingly and I'll let that dry overnight really good and then I'll sand the seam down um, so I'll put the cement around like this whoa a little too much In a case like this, I don't know how accurate it is, but I'm sure it's somewhat accurate, especially if the aircraft saw a lot of use, that uh, sanding the seam down actually isn't that big a deal, because if you wear the tread away, well, you know, tread wears away. Landing and taking off and hitting the brakes and all that kind of stuff. So there's that. So taking these apart, and uh, then I'm hitting the uh, edges here. Because there's a mold seam line. I need to make sure because when paint hits that, it'll be visible in a horrible kind of way. I've already done this to the other, the other part, the fork part, wishbone, whatever you want to call it. All right, so that goes there, and then. these parts fit like this 
So I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little step right here and it matches the step here. So it actually gives you a really good firm mounting point. It'd be kind of hard to mess up. Now, I could mess it up, but you know, that's me. We'll see. So I'll glue this together. Then I'll cut the other one off and clean it up and glue it together. And then um, you can see about fitting it to the actual aircraft. Yeah, that's a pretty positive connection. So set that aside and I'll work on the other one. Okay, so now I can um, install these onto the airframe. And it all fits pretty good. And the nice thing is, is it lines up really well and won't be very fragile like some uh, aircraft landing gear rigs can be. So let's get cement in there and there there's three points here and then So that should be pretty stout. I don't shouldn't have to worry about breaking that off. Hopefully. Like that. So that takes care of step 20 and um, part of step 21 because I got those installed. So <coughs> the next thing Let's cut off the 21 and 20 for back here. And it's about time I break out the old uh, stand. Um, so 20 and 21. Let's scoot some of this stuff out of the way. And find D 20 and 21. So... Let me spin this around to orient it like the illustration. So 21 goes on that side, 20 goes on that side. So let's cut off 20 first. This very fragile part that thanks to my spectacular to me a cutter. I should be able to cut it off without breaking anything. <gasps> like that. Awesome. Actually, it was already broken. But that's okay because that's what glue's for. So we'll set that over there, that over there. Looks like it lays pretty much flat, so it should be easy to uh, deal with. So let's clean this one up first. So this, whoa, this fits. There's a pin here that fits there. And there's pins here, but I am not sure why there are pinholes. Ah, oh, ha ha. See, this is, you gotta use this for whenever you do the folded wings okay because it fits yeah so with that in mind I'm not actually going to glue those in place yet because I'm going to need to make sure I get the right the right angle So, I may have to do something about filling that hole, but anyway, so 
I'm not actually going to glue these in place yet. So I'm going to set it aside. But I do have to repair this other one. So I'm going to do that real quick like. And basically it's just going to be a matter of lining it all up and just putting a little bit of cement on there and that'll that'll take care of it all right so the next part i want to glue on is this k6 i'm gonna have to be careful that i don't break it off but this is it and uh, i really don't want to have to glue that on later because that's pretty tiny to have to paint so um and i'll have to drill a hole in the wing i'll have to kind of eyeball where it goes and i thought maybe i missed where it uh, showed in the instructions, but there's there's no place, there's nowhere in the instructions that it showed to drill a hole for this part. So that's kind of weird, and it does. Um, it does. Um, This part right here is a pin that goes in, so I am going to have to drill a hole, so I need to get it a bit and do so. Alright, so I got the hole drilled, so let's see if this fits, and it does wonderfully so. Get a little bit of cement. sure that looks pretty good cement uh, all right so there's that so we got that so that takes care of step number 21 and the exhaust is something I'm going to do later uh, for the folded wing deal showing the same thing just with the option you know the parts in a different position oh and uh, I'm gonna let it dry but for um, the folded wing the pin on the back is supposed to be removed like that. Carefully trim that down so it doesn't have that protrusion going there. All right, so let's see if I can do it on this one without breaking it apart since that's the one I had to repair. I'll just hold the non-repair side. And... Like that. So that's good. So that's ready to go. So now I can actually move on to... Step number 23, which is the uh, torpedo rack. So, all right, so in 23, first thing I'll do is I'll glue on the uh, little step thing, which is D44. this right here okay so I often comment that the way you're supposed to use this stuff is you put the parts in place and then glue it but in a case like this I will put a little bit of cement in there just to tack it in place but I won't rely on that to um, 
hold it in place uh, or to permanently affix it. So I tag it in place and then I use some more of it to actually make sure it sticks like that. All right, real quick, like before I start on that torpedo uh, rack, I'm going to demonstrate how I do tires. I do it for any any kind of tires that I need to sand the seam, armor, aircraft, whatever. I just take it, put my instead of trying to hold it and do this number, I just put this here and just rotate it all the way around. Usually I use something a little finer to get to start with, but in this one I want to buzz it down pretty good because it's got a good ridge. Um, so I'm using a little coarser. So then once it's gone, then I switch over to a finer just to smooth it up. And as I'm dragging it, I'm rolling it against the direction of travel. So that way I don't get any flat spots. And I keep it as vertical as possible to make sure the wear pattern is somewhat even. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be good enough. Now, if I was really, really concerned about the tread and I wanted the tread all the way around, well, then I would just uh, invest in some resin wheels. But uh, there you go. It's all nice and smooth and ready to go. So I'll be able to paint it when the time comes. All right, so next I'm going to cut the parts off for this... Uh, <clears throat> This torpedo rack. So I need E18, 15, 16, 18, and 19. So let's see. That's kind of cool. And because there's two E sprues, if you mess something up, at least you got a spare part. So let's get 18. Nineteen sixteen and fifteen, which is this really small thing here. All right, so a couple other things I did uh, in time-lapse mistakenly, so I'm just going to have to tell you about it. Um, I glued this part on here, and I hadn't cut out the holes for it, so I had to uh, um, drill some holes using my small drill bits, but it wasn't too hard. Just set it up there, measured it, drilled the holes, glued it together. Then... I cut these off and uh, glued those in place. And I got the propeller and the spinner cut off. Uh, all I need to do is clean those up and get them ready for paint, as well as the machine gun. I got that cut off as well. So let me clean those up real quick. All right, so I got those parts cleaned up. So, what does that mean? That means this video is done. So in this uh, video, we got parts or steps 18 through 24 completed as much as I can before paint. So, in part eight, when we come back, we will begin with primer and paint. So, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Questions, comments, etc. 
put them in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you. So as always, thanks for watching and I will see you all later.